Hey guys, it's Matt here. Today, I'll be showing off my Hackintosh. So this is my Hackintosh. The tower here, this is a monitor, whatever. This computer is not the most powerful and I'll explain why. So as you can see here, we've got the audio ports on the top here. Come on, focus. There's a little bit of scuffing right there, but it's not a big deal. We've got two USB 2 ports, a USB 3 port, and you can see on the back here, we've got the graphics card. This is a GT710 graphics card. This is a blank. This is a five port USB 3 hub. Um, this connects via PCIe, of course, and it works natively on Mac OS, so I just went with it. It also made this port operational as my motherboard doesn't have a USB 3 header on it. So that's fun. You can also see here, this is actually an Inspiron 620 and you can get those relatively cheap. So this Hackintosh didn't really cost much and you can see this isn't the most powerful with a Core i3. I put the stickers on the back here uh, because I didn't want to mess with the appearance of the front of the case. So that's why I went with that. So you can see, We've got six USB ports here, Ethernet right there, HDMI, which I have one on my graphics card here. We've got a VGA port, which my graphics card also has here, and we have the audio ports, which do not work under Mac OS, meaning that these two don't work either. Um, this is temporary. I'm getting a new motherboard because the one in this computer kind of sucks. <laughs> so yeah, and then obviously we've got the power supply. Move these out of the way again. And oh, I forgot to mention, this is a Wi-Fi card and the Wi-Fi card that's in there is natively supported under Mac OS. So that's why that's there. So let's get this thing powered up. I will do a screen recording once I actually get this fully like booted up and stuff. Welcome to Clover 4243, scan entries. Now, I'm gonna prevent this from booting on its own. You do need Clover, obviously, in order to do a Hackintosh. Now, you can also see here, this says external. You're probably confused <laughs> why it says external, and I do have Linux on an internal drive. It's external because if I pop off the side here, you'll see exactly why it is marked as external. So yeah, it may look like a mess here because it kind of is. You can see I've got my Linux drive here. This is a 250 gig drive. Then this is the drive that Mac OS is housed in. This is a 500 gig drive. And you can see here, I've got a USB internal hub here that connects to this. And that's what gives me access to Mac OS because um, for those of you who don't know, you do need AHCI uh, in order to boot Mac OS from an internal drive. And my Mac doesn't have that or my, hack, my motherboard doesn't support it. So I had to figure out a workaround um, otherwise, it works perfectly fine. It's just a shame that it doesn't actually support one of the things that macOS really needs. Thank goodness, though, that didn't stop me from Mac OS. What? That didn't stop me from actually using this thing day to day. It is you, booting USB isn't the fastest. A lot of people do know that. Um, but then again, the hard disk is it's a hard it's a spinning disk. I will upgrade to an SSD later, but I will need to upgrade first to a new motherboard. Let's just get right into booting the install. This process usually doesn't take too long, but well, not hang, it's not hung. It, it's just normal, I think. Hmm. Here we are in Mac OS on the Hackintosh. If I go to the About This Mac section, you should see here, um, there we are, Hack Pro. I did change some things, so that's why it looks just a little bit different. So you can see now we should be up on the screen here. So you can see here it says Hack Pro. I changed this. You can go into a PLS file to customize your uh, computer. You can also see storage. I've used a decent amount of space. Oh my gosh. Um, and here's the RAM actually. Here's This uses DDR3 memory. 
and you can see I've got a four gig module. This is a regular desktop module. And then I actually had an eight gig SODIMM. So I bought an adapter to use with the Hackintosh. And now we've got this thing bumped up to 12 gigabytes. And if we go to support, this probably is not gonna do me very well. And I did change the picture here. And there's not gonna be Apple Care on Hackintosh. So there we are. That's that part. Now, how does the computer actually perform? Well, I'll just say this right now. I actually use this as my main editing rig. No, I do not use this. Um, I actually do use this as my main editing rig. So if I open, do I have a recent project that I can do? Uh, no, okay, I don't. I think, I, yeah, I emptied my trash before this, so that makes sense. So what about for general media consumption? Well, that works pretty well too. Oh, I've got a lot open. So you can see general media consumption. Let me just bring my YouTube studio here. It's being slow. I'm, my Wi-Fi is not great down here. Even just with AT&T Wi-Fi, it just sucks. So you can see here, web browsing works perfectly fine. It's a bit slow, but that's just because of my internet uh, being dumb. So let's see. Let's pick a good video. Well, let's just pick my Mac Pro video. You can see general media consumption. I need to change this intro. General media consumption works perfectly fine. I've been able to watch videos on here. Uh, and for actually, just for a little fun fact here, I actually did use this Mac Pro that's in this video as my main computer for a while until I ultimately changed it to my Hackintosh because the Mac Pro couldn't run anything higher than El Capitan and that causes problems. So this is Tom's video about his one come on. <laughs> Go watch him, he's seriously a good YouTuber. Check out that on the side. You can see. I mean, this is already cranked up to 1080p. I don't think he makes videos above that, so I don't really need to switch browsers right now. But you can see 1080p consumption works perfectly fine. I can do video editing, all that kind of stuff. And this is this is not a powerful computer. This only got, I think, a 5,000 on multi-core for Geekbench. It's not powerful, and I do want to get an upgrade, but it works perfectly fine for what I need it to. So you're probably wondering why I'm not using like Mojave or something. I like High Sierra mainly because um, it just, it first of all, I installed it because I didn't know if it would work with my graphics card because it is Nvidia and Apple doesn't really like doing that, but I did find out. It works perfectly fine. Um, what else can I open up? Okay, this is one of my favorite applications. This is just a uh, mod tracker application here. Um, no sounds seem to come through apparently. That's kind of odd. Interesting. Wonder why that is. Um, let's see here. Oh yeah, I haven't. This computer, I've been working with school, so I've just been using my laptop. But um, let's see. Let's go to music. And you can see it actually does this stuff. Uh, Fast Tracker, which is my obviously my tracker file. This works perfectly fine. having trouble because I just stopped it and moved it somewhere else. So this works fine. It's a bit of glitching because it's airplay, but works fine. Use just general media consumption like this just works fine. In fact, you could get an even cheaper Hackintosh. In fact, you can watch Snazzy Labs video on a $70 Crappintosh video that he did. And that I think outperforms this computer. So I would definitely not recommend getting a computer with these specs if you really can, unless you do the same thing like me with a hand-me-down, especially because the system doesn't even support a key component in Mac OS. You can see this looks like an internal drive. This isn't. If I actually go into get info here um, and I delete this icon, it will show the external drive icon. Um, there we go. So you can see that is actually what the icon would look like on this computer because it thinks it's an external drive. It is technically internal, that's why I changed the icon, so then it was actually an internal disk. Um, but you can see it actually is external. Now you're probably thinking, well, couldn't you just boot the hard drive on Mac OS and hook it up to the SATA bus and open the BIOS and boot it? And it will boot, or it will try, but you will get to a point where it will just show a prohibitory sign and it won't go any further because it needs AHCI, because it can't read the disk. After it is, to the second stage of booting, it needs AHCI to actually continue using the operating system. And without that, it will just simply give you a prohibitory sign and say your hard drive is dead as it just 
it wasn't able to talk to it anymore. So that is why that breaks. Um, let's see here. So now if I, let's apply that icon back to it because <laughs> it looks a bit off without it. Oh, that's basically my Hackintosh right there. Um, would I suggest getting one with a similar spec? I honestly would say no. You can still get components for cheap, especially something that's less than $800. Yeah, that's about it for this video. So if you liked it, uh, please subscribe, leave a like on the video, and as always, I'll see you later. Bye guys.